If you hear any wind during this episode, it's because for some reason the wind is going crazy outside my house. Sorry about that. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 92 of the Journey's anime titled Gengar Does Its Best. The road to Gigantamax just dropped, and this is a continuation from the previous episode as Ash tries to get his Gengar to Gigantamax. We know he's gonna be able to eventually do it. The question is, how? Let's find out. Continuing from last episode, our heroes are here in Stoan's side because Ash found out about Gigantamax Gengar and Professor Cerise suggested that they head to the ghost gym leader of Galar to achieve it and try to figure out how to do it. They arrive in Stoan's side and I was wondering how they would address the whole B being gym leader thing and it looks like the way they got around that is by giving Alistair another building as his gym and have that be next to the stadium so that he can Gigantamax there. And that's where they end up going after an awkward first meeting before Ash tells him that he wants to Gigantamax his Gengar. While heading to the stadium, B is there, which I didn't expect, and she wishes Ash and Gengar well to achieve Gigantamax. He tries it, but unfortunately, it looks like Gengar can only Dynamax, not Gigantamax. And while Gengar is sad about this at first, it gets excited when it learns that it will be able to if they can get a hold of Max Soup, which is found using Max Mushrooms. In order to do so, they need to go to a forest with lots of unique ghost types that holds Max Mushrooms. And even though it sounds scary, Ash is willing to go. Since you require three stems of mushroom to get Max Soup just like in the game, there are three obstacles facing our heroes. First, it's a nest of Cursula in a graveyard. They need to get the Max Mushroom in the nest without waking it up, so Ash rides on Gengar to grab it. I will question why he's riding on the underside of Gengar instead of, you know, on its back, but it does seem to work out as he's able to grab the mushroom with no problem. Almost. His hat falls and wakes up on the Cursula, which could be a massive issue, however, Go throws a Pokeball at it and captures it before it's able to do anything else. Ash then brings back the mushroom and presumably also Ghost Ball along with his hat. The second mushroom is in the forest. They find it near a tree root and it looks like it'll be an easy pickup, but in fact, there is a Trevenant in the forest which apparently hates all humans, so after grabbing the mushrooms, they have to make a run for it. Finally, they see a mushroom where a Dracloak is sleeping. While they approach it, Dreepy falls from its head. Ash picks it up only for it to go inside of his hat and sleep on top of his head. Then Dracloak wakes up and puts Grookey on its head. Apparently, it feels uncomfortable if it has nothing on its head. All is going well and cute until Grookey decides to start beating on Dracloak's head, causing it to go berserk. When Ash calls out to let it know that he has his Dreepy, it flies into Ash into what the Pokedex said is like 200 miles an hour, which is crazy, only to be stopped by Gengar. They give the Dreepy back, the Dracoloke is happy, and when asked for, hands Ash the final Max Mushroom. Back in the gym area, Alistair begins to cook him. It looks like it's going to take a while to cook him, and at first, Ash is confident that he'll be so excited that he'll look after the soup. However, he's the first one to fall asleep. Alistair then tells Go he can sleep since he'll take care of the soup, so he does. And before Gengar can open the soup early, he stops him and has a heart-to-heart -heart conversation talking about Gengar's past and how happy he is now being with Ash. This is later presumed to be by B to be the reason that the shy Alistair was willing to help out Ash, something he usually wouldn't do. The next day, Gengar drinks the Max Soup and our heroes head to the stadium. B also shows up there as we all witness Gengar successfully Gigantamaxing. Our heroes celebrate and the episode ends with all of our heroes heading back on the train and thanking Alistair while leaving. This is a really fun episode. It has heartfelt moments as well as fun moments. The only thing that I wish is that the Max Mushroom situations were a bit funnier, like the ones we got were fine, but they feel very generic. The only one that felt unique was the Dracloak one, which is the one they spent the most time on. But when you hear a forest full of ghost Pokemon, there's so much possibility there, so many creative things you could do, but instead it felt like they played it safe, which isn't inherently a bad thing. The situations we got were fine, but I felt like they could have been much more imaginative. However, I could understand them not wanting to make the hunt for the mushrooms be too long either, because if you make the mushroom bits longer, you lose the time for the moments around the end where Gengar and Alistair just bond. And that's genuinely one of the better moments we've gotten so far. It's similar to the Iris moment with Dragonite, except this one feels a lot more intimate since it's not in the middle of a crazy battle. 
If Ash were to ever release Gengar, it would be Alistair who would probably take him. I also like the fact that this city feels a bit more alive. Not the city itself, I mean even on the train on a major city like this it isn't full, but that could also be an artistic choice because it's meant to be a ghost Pokemon related episode, and the city being empty kind of gives an atmosphere that matches that. No, I mean in terms of regular day to day work. B is the gym leader of Stoanside Gym, so we see her show up to her place of work, and unlike the general shonen trope, she isn't in her known outfit. She's wearing what someone who's casually coming to their workplace would. I really like that touch. Overall, this is a pretty fun episode. There's action, there's heartfelt moments and character development to be had as well as Pokemon development since now Gengar has an ability to distinguish it. I'd recommend checking this episode out, I'd give this an Ultra Ball. I'll talk about the new trailer that dropped here too since it's so short that I don't think it's really worth making an entire video on. The PV that we got shows what we're going to get over the next couple of episodes, and it looks like we're going to get the return of Butch and Cassidy, which is exciting for some, but to me, I don't really care that much about them. Uh, what looks like maybe another two-parter with the Slow King helmet thing, Chloe doing what looks like a contest, more Eevee-related stuff including one with Erica, as well as the debut of Marnie and Piers. There seems to be some interesting debuts and I would love to see what development occurs with any of these characters here. It doesn't look like we're going to get an Ash battle anytime soon though, which makes sense since he's pretty deep in the Ultra class. Maybe it could be Marnie, but I feel like their episode is going to be something that involves both the brother and sister, both Marnie and Pierce, but maybe I could be wrong, so who knows. Other than that, we shall see. In terms of the next episode, it looks like we're finally getting a Ren and his Magnemite focused episode. Since Chris already got her episode, I hope this one is good too. But anyways, that is it from our review of episode 92 of the Journeys anime. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.